Bob and Hensel. We're here for another edition of Can We Talk? And we've got a lot to discuss today. As you can see, we've both got paperwork in front of us for once. Usually it's just Robin. Um, you, I think, were, you had some way you wanted to start out this conversation? Yeah. Um, well, first, I think it's appropriate to read something. I brought my iPad so that I could read this because I didn't have time to print this before I left this morning. Oh, okay. The early warning signs of fascism are powerful and continuing nationalism, disdain for human rights, identification of enemies as a unifying cause, rampant sexism, controlled mass media, obsession with national security, religion and government intertwined, corporate power protected, labor power suppressed, Disdain for in intellectual and the arts. Obsession with crime and punishment. Rampant cronyism and corruption. All very much on the national uh, scene as well as the local. But it, yes, very much the local. And that leads us right into what I believe is happening here again. Because our views for our programs are so different than the community norms that are normally accepted here are that I think that has helped uh, cause problems with recording our shows. And of course, you know that many times I record um, things that people don't want to have repeated out in the public arena. Okay. And that of course is true for uh, Great River TV staff as well as and the in board. the past city council members. And yes, the Cable Review Board, I'm sure they were infuriated when I uh, publicized the video that I recorded of the last Cable Board meeting, which was on July 17th of 2017. Um, and that was on your blog? And I put it on the blog. I, I recorded the entire meeting and put it on the blog and um, so that the people could see the reaction and what Jay Spillum said in response to the recent um, hearing, the Cable Review Board hearing that we called for. And so now Jay Spillum is the president of the, or the chairman of that board. Of the city committee, the Cable Review Board, that's right. correct. It's an official city committee, just as the planning and uh, commission is, and the park, tree, and recreational board, and the um, economic development board is. It's mm -hmm. an official city board. It's and they are required. Volunteers. It's not a paid position. Right. They are required to meet according to what it reads in the city ordinance, and they are to abide by whatever that policy is. <laughs> policy is, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But I'm going to begin this by um, first. I'll have you do this. Um, we'll talk about this first. I have brought along this video titled. Hijab unveiled. Okay, I'm going to be leaving that with Mark Sloop after today's filming, when we're done in less than an hour. He's the station manager here. Yes, Mark Sloop. <clears throat> and I'm going to also leave one of our old shows, Reality Players, from dated interview with Robin Hensel, and it's misspelled. It's written as H E N Z E L. Oh, that's that was before they knew you so well, perhaps. Right. right. Well, that was Jerry Abraham's oh, mistake. Okay. And that was two station managers ago. Reality Players, another interview from Rob, with Robin Hensel, August of 2012. So June and August, an interview with me, and I'm going to leave those. Those, That's one of our old shows, a show that we don't film anymore yeah. called Reality Players. Reality Players. We had a number of them, and one was called um, Occupy. Occupy. And we had yes. some others too. Yeah. And I'll be bringing those in and asking Mark to play those as freestanding shows, airing old broadcasts, re airing old broadcasts, because uh, most recently, within the last couple of months, Mark Sloop decided to start airing um, Gary Block's Little Fall Scene, which is no longer filmed new shows, it's all old stuff. And he was given a character generated announcement. That Gary Block was given that. Right. right. His program, Little False Scene, was given a character-generated 
announcement that lists the time and the date that the shows will be playing three times a week. Right. Okay. He also, Mark Sloop also decided to record and air another brand new show called Talk of the Town. And it was given a character generated announcement and aired three times a week uh, on a regular basis for some period of time. I don't know if that show was still airing at the cable board. I never he caught said it. it wasn't. Okay, yeah, I never caught it when but it was. But it did airing. air for quite some time. Okay. And this was the, the Convention and Visitors Bureau folks who, who made that. Well, part. Christina von Berg was there, and so was Melissa Peterson of the Lindbergh Center, and another gal who, I forget her name, but she runs, she's the manager of the Linden Hills Convention Center here sure. in town. Okay? Sure. Okay. So those two shows, within the last three or four months here, were given something that we asked for. Back in 2016, the latter part of 2016, when we developed two new shows for us. Well, one of the new shows wasn't really a new show. We'd been airing it for a while and regularly filming The Billionaires. And another show that was brand new called Church and State. The local view. Right. Okay. I asked in an email dated March 4th um, of 2017. Of 2017. Uh, well, I'll read that in a moment. Um, what I asked for by email, and I copied everybody important that I have email addresses for, um, John Rodemacher, the city administrator, Leif Hansen, who is actually on the cable review board and is our ward representative on the city council. He's our representative here in town. Um, and a number of other people, probably Brad Urcock and Raquel Lundberg, Jill Moore, who is the uh, president of Great River Arts Association. No, she's she's the general manager for Great okay. River Arts. Okay. Um, asking them to create a... I, I, I was asking the question why we weren't given a character-generated announcement for either of those two shows, The Billionaires and The Church of State, which we should have had, that would have allowed our viewers to know when we were going to, when our shows were going to be airing. They also were aired only one time a week. Instead of three times a week per week, like this show is, mm -hmm. or Can We Talk, and Gary Blocks, Little False Scene, Little False scene mm -hmm. and Talk of the Town. Right. Um, so this is it was it was about access and reasonable accommodation for our programming, uh, and making and sure that everybody had the same, the same shot. Fairness, yeah. right? Fairness, right? Because public access is supposed to free speech is supposed to be honored the same under the Constitution and the FCC. That's the Federal Commission's uh, communication Communication Act of nineteen thirty four and eighty four. It's clear that free speech was the main reason for developing that Cable Communications Act. Right, exactly, and the cable and access, what public access. what really tr troubles me, as well as confuses me, is that as part of Mark Sloop's job requirements, he is supposed to be knowledgeable of all the laws involving uh, cable and every, every law that applies to operation of this kind of studio. Right. But I don't think that he understands free speech whatsoever. Because he seems to think, and you'll hear it in some of the emails that I'm going to be reading, that there's different parameters around what you and I say, what comes out of our mouth, mm -hmm. than what comes out of Gary Block's mouth, or Christina Von Berg's mouth, or anyone else who... Or anyone else in that's program. filming in here. Everybody that films in this studio, that does a program, doesn't matter what it's about, it's all free speech. Exactly. Free speech is not some special conditional kind of talk. It's whatever anybody says. He may associate free speech with controversial speech, but that's just not the case. Yeah. Free speech is even dance and art and, and other forms of expression. Sleeping overnight in a park, maybe even sitting in a chair. <laughs> or occupying a public space without right. being harassed. There are it. numbers of different ways to example and use free speech, right? 
All right, so I'm going to begin this with the present, the most recent communication that I had with Mark Sloop. Uh, I, this is his response, and I'll read it first, and then I'll tell you what I had written about. This is dated July 20th, 2017. Subject, new show and rebroadcast of old shows. Robin, and this is from Mark Sloop to me. Robin Hensel. For any shows by anyone to be broadcast on GRTV, I must review them first. At this time, I do not have any new or old shows of yours to air. Well, I wonder who does, does because I saw when Jerry Abraham was the station manager, and also most recently, a couple of years ago, when Chris Wise was the station manager, all of our old videos, are in a, our programs, show, were yeah. in his office, on a shelf, and it wasn't just our old shows, it was everybody's shows, right. okay? Now, according to Mark Sloop, on, at the last cable board meeting, he mentioned that the person who, who owns the videos, because I asked who owned all the previously recorded videos, and he made the comment that GRTV owned them, okay? Right. Because any that the, the GRTV recorded, they owned them. Or that the producer owned them, okay? Well, Chris Wise was our producer. He stood in here and monitored the camera and everything, zoomed in, did all kinds of fancy little things for us. Close-ups and cuts back and forth. So he was the producer of the studio. So Chris Wise, evidently, according to Mark Sloop's own comments recently, his own free speech, Chris Wise owns those videos that he produced for us of billionaires and Can We Talk for the two years that he worked for this studio. Right. So how is it that Mark Sloop doesn't have those videos? Who does? Chris doesn't have them. And if it's true what Mark Sloop said, that the producer owns those shows, then that would have to mean that someone stole Chris Wise's property. A whole ton of videos that were produced in the studio were somehow taken from Chris Wise. And apparently disposed of because they, um, Mark is telling us they no longer exist. Well, I want an answer from somebody about a, a number of things, including where are all those old videos that were produced by Jerry Abraham and were produced by Chris Wise. Right. And there's also, um, there's a big knowledge gap here for, for us, and we've researched this and looked into it, about whether the city owns some of the old videos. Um, since the city is the governing body of, the, of GRA TV, so... Well, the city contract with GRA TV and Great River Arts Association that allows them to operate this channel, that city agreement says that the city owns all equipment and supplies. Now, supplies would have to be these type of discs. Mm -hmm. That would be the main supply used in here, right? Yeah, after paper and pencil, one would right. think, yeah. So it should include everything. This would have to be supplies. So that would mean then that the city owns all of the content that's on all these DVDs, right? Or even the ones that are waiting to be recorded on, because that's supplies to run the studio. But Mark Soup contradicts that with his free speech by saying that the producer owns the all videos the that were produced. That he was produced. Who's telling the truth? Which is it? The city contract, or what Mark's free speech says? And by the way, the um, the reason our shows look different now than they used to look, they used to have cuts back and forth, as I said, close-ups and, and um, medium two shots like the one you're seeing now, is that there's no producer in the studio. It's just Mark sets up the camera, gets it going, tells us we're good to go, and then he leaves. Yeah. So, And the reason for that, so, he says, is that he does not want to be the owner of the property. Well, he's not the, he's, he claims he's not the producer, and yet he's editing, and he's putting these up on the cable, uh, channel 180, so... I think he is the cable producer, but but he had a sign a form saying we were the producer. Okay, for whatever reason, to protect his butt, whatever. I would think so. Yeah. Now I'm going to finish this email from J July twentieth. Any reality players program or anything else you have must be dropped off at the station. I will review them as my time allows. 
All programming of the shows will be determined by me. This has been clearly explained to you in the past. As for the August 14th meeting to review your shows, which are these shows, it won't be happening. It will not be happening. I will review any, I will not review any show brought in for broadcast publicly or with any member of the public present. Why not? What's he hiding? Okay, the concern about these particular videos is that they don't play on, on Robin's home. Right, they don't play uh, either DVD of my DVD players. players. And I'm concerned because I spent a lot of money. I paid $10 a piece for each of these, and I've got dozens and dozens and dozens of them. Maybe hundreds, I don't know. I'd have to count them all. So that Robin I wants from to Jerry see. Abraham. Right. I paid him the ten dollars, right. and none of them play. And these are our old shows. None play in my DVD player. So she wants to say for herself that they will work right. on the studio. I want to know if they play, and I'd kind of like to see what what the content is in them. So if I know that that if they're if I really want to broadcast or not, if right. they're important or not. But Mark Sloop refused to meet with us after the Kibbelberg meeting on July seventeenth, when I asked him. I had these videos in hand, and I said I want to stay after the meeting and have you play just a couple minutes of them so I can see if they play in your DVD player. Right. And exactly. his comment was, well, they'll play in here because they were made on our equipment. They, they, were, they were made here. Right. Okay. So he said he didn't have time to meet with us after the cable board meeting because he had so much other more important stuff to do. So it was his suggestion to set up a step, he said to both of us at that meeting, that we had to come in, set up a special meeting because we were bringing him in business in so the it had form to be a of business videos, meeting. Yeah. it had to be a business meeting, and he set it up. He said that the first available date he had would be August 14th, almost a month from that meeting, before he'd even have his time for us, August 14th at 1 o'clock. And that's the meeting he's saying in this communication that he's now decided to cancel. So, I want the public to know at the end of this filming, Teresa and I are going to be presenting these two videos for starters to play. And we expect a character-generated announcement to be created by whoever, him or Heather Jorgensen, that advertises our show the three times per week it's played in advance of this show starting to play. So we're going to present these to Mark. Great. And we expect them to be played for a few three three times a week projects. instead of one time a week, like he did with Billionaires and Church of State, because we deserve fairness. Same as he's treated Gary Block, Christina Von Berg, Melissa Peterson, and the gal who manages the Linden Hills Convention Center. And this is Hijab Unveiled. This is a film that I made in 2013. I went down to a program at St. Cloud State University called uh, the S Social Responsibility Forum. When I brought this in for, for Jerry Abraham to play, he refused to play this. Now, so did he I, say he couldn't make it work, or that he just didn't feel it was... I don't remember, but this yeah. never aired on public access. And this was a sh under a show that I had developed called All Things Natural, a children's show. That was another show that we used to have on air about all kinds of kids' issues. And so More I have half the programming on this channel is generated here between the two of us. Right. And Mark Sloop mm -hmm. always claims to be so busy that we, we can only film one day a week, and that's on a Wednesday... Because that's the only time he has to accommodate the public in their filming. Right. What's he doing the other four days a week? Who's he working for? What's he doing the other four days? We're the only show that's been created up until those two shows. And one of them isn't even a new show. It's an old show. Gary Black's show is an old show. Oh, so only one brand yeah. new show yeah. by the public has been ever created in here that was a legitimate public access show. Now, he did produce and did air an illegally broadcast show called Shops of Little Falls. He filmed it, and he aired it for two and a half months or close to that. And it was a clear advertisement for a legitimate business that included a whole bunch of individual artists and businesses within the Shops of Little Falls. A practice clearly banned in this studio. Their own policy says mm -hmm. you cannot... Air, they will not air an advertisement or a commercial um, show, okay? So they broke their own policy. They violated it. Okay, so now we're going to talk about 
um, after the cable board meeting, Teresa and I spent some time together and we decided to go ahead and ask for, again, a cable board hearing because we clearly haven't been given that. We've been blown off since March 4th and we expect to have our beefs with Mark Sloop, our disagreements, our disputes, listened to by our cable review board. Mm -hmm. They are required to do that. According to this same policy that we're citing here, the it's called policies and procedures. The policies and procedures of GRTV, and it was it was um, it was written by the adopted on November twelfth of two thousand fourteen. So this has been a, a in place for more than close you know three plus years now. Mm -hmm. They have to abide by this policy, folks. And our cable review board, whether they like it or not, is their job is to oversee this. They should know everything in this policy. It's their job. And let me just read this this quick little bit. Um, <clears throat> if disputes or disagreements, this is in the policies and procedures, if disputes or disagreements occur between a potential or actual GRA TV user and the staff of GRA TV, the access user can request in writing a meeting with the cable review board. Such discussions should be scheduled within 10 days of the dispute. Well, we first requested right. this in March. So March 4th. And it's now almost the, the last of July. So well, we were never we were never given a cable board review hearing. And instead of putting us on the agenda for the April 17th meeting, their uh, usual they, quarterly well, meeting, they, they shouldn't have done that. They should have just given us a separate cable review board hearing. Right. Not Nowhere guessing. in this policy does it say that you should have to wait until the next upcoming four times a year is all the time they meet. Right. If I every three months specifically that it needs to be dealt with in, within within three days within ten days. So now March fourth until today's date we're at J July twenty sixth and tomorrow is the tenth day since the last time we since the asked last for time it. we re requested this in this email in writing and we're obviously not going to get that hearing because tomorrow we haven't been informed about any kind of hearing tomorrow or anything. So the city and the cable. Review board as well as Jill Moore, they're all blowing us off about our concerns about Mark Sloop because, frankly, we're telling the truth, and we want the public know to know everything about what we feel uh, is breaking of their rules, violating our right to free speech, and treating us substantially different when it comes to fairness in our shows. Right. Okay, this is the email that I sent on July seventeenth, shortly after. Uh, the review board, uh, the, the cable uh, review board meeting that was held just outside this door here. And I wrote it to John Rademacher, the city administrator, Jill Moore, the um, manager, general okay. manager of Great River Arts Association, who is Mark Sloop's boss, Leif Hansen, our, uh, our council, council representative. representative, Raquel uh, Lundgren. Lundberg, our, also our other Council Representative Brad Hercock, our Alderman at Large, and Greg Zilka, the Mayor of the City. I also copied um, Frank Goshik, the other Council person, Wayne Liljegren, Jeremy Hanfler, Jerry Nafla. So basically, the entire, the entire council, city council was, yeah. was covered. And I copied my former attorney, Larry Frost. I copied Rick Nolan, who was our Congressman's. Assistant, whose name is Rick Olsen, Jill Moore, Mark Slew, Terry Lurkey from the Morrison County Record, and the Brainerd Dispatch editor, Matt Erickson. So they all got this email. John, Jill, Leif, Raquel, Brad, Greg. As per the GRA TV policy and procedures that govern public access TV, Teresa Scorsett and I are requesting a cable review board hearing to voice our grievances with how Mark Sloop's actions, rules, decisions about our free speech regarding our three public access programs, Can We Talk, Church and State, and The Billionaires, John and Jill, why were we not given the requested hearing within the 10-day requirement? See attachments below. As you will recall, I requested this hearing on March 4, 2017 in writing, but our hearing was not scheduled within the 10 days of that formal request, as stated in GRTV policies and procedures, it was supposed to be heard at the regular April 
cable board meeting instead of within 10 days of our written request. I could not attend that meeting due to a family, due to a family emergency, so I emailed John Rademacher and others letting them know of my family emergency and to request another date for the hearing. John emailed me back saying our hearing would be heard at the next cable board meeting on July 17, 2017, but we weren't even on the agenda. This is the actual agenda of that meeting. What is on here is something new, and it's called the public comments period. And we were allowed to speak at this last cable board meeting for five minutes. Which was not nearly enough time well, to go was, through all the material that, that we wasn't had. a public hearing no. as required by this policy. It was not a hearing. It was a, it was a chance to air our comments. Okay. A short chance. Three board members, including Leif Hansen, Al Sandquist, and Thor Lindquist, did not show for the cable board meeting today, so there was no quorum. The official city cable board meeting was called to order officially. Mark, uh, Jay Spillum officially called it to order. There was a discussion of all the items on the agenda except approval of the minutes from the last meeting, including updates from Mark Sloop, great GRA TV. He was able to give his updates. So was Mark Deal from the school channel. And the progress on the cable franchise agreement was given by John Rademacher, city administrator. The meeting was not properly closed. Jay Spill will never close that meeting. And but he officially other, opened it. it. Yeah. The attending members walked out before this meeting was closed, and the first one to get up was John Rademacher. And when I said this meeting hasn't even been officially adjourned, he said, real smart aleck like, it never even began. He's our city administrator. <clears throat> and then now the last part is, please inform us both via email as to the date and time of our hearing. Thank you, Robin Hensel and Teresa Scorsett. And, and of course, to date, we've, we've heard nothing. Right. That was nine days ago. Right. Tomorrow supposed is to have the, the tenth day. Meeting within ten days. So, I wrote, before... That letter came back to me from Mark Sloop saying that the meeting on the August 14th that he had insisted on wasn't going to happen. I wrote this. Mark, as requested, I'm writing this email to confirm our meeting, Teresa, you and I, about bringing in four previously filmed reality player videos I would like aired on Channel 180. Three times per week and a character generator announcement created and aired before and during their airings. The same as Talk of the Town and Little Falls Scene got recently. I want to watch as you put each of them in your DVD player and play a few minutes of each one. Notice I said a few minutes. So we both know if they play. That's the reason I want him to play it when I'm in his presence. As I mentioned to you today at Cable Board Meeting, these four videos were purchased by me from Jerry Abraham when he was the public access station manager. He filmed them in the public studio, but they don't play in my home DVD player. There's another video I want you to air that's titled Hijab Unveiled that I recorded at the St. Cloud State University at a social responsibility forum a while back. Teresa and I look forward to this meeting with you then. See you then. Kind regards, Robin and Teresa. And then we were told curtly that he wasn't going to have the meeting after all. The meeting that he said he had to have if we were bringing him in business. Right, so he said we could only do it this way, and then he said, but I'm not going to do it. Great. Right. Here is a picture that I took of these three videos for proof that I'm leaving him, leaving this here today. Because I want the public to know that I'm holding Mark Sloop accountable for airing those. And frankly, <clears throat> I don't trust Mark Sloop any more than I trust Jerry Abraham at this point. So I have reason to cover my bases in every realm. In other words, we're afraid that if we just leave it with him, he'll say, you know what, they don't play. And then he won't have to show them. And I want proof. I want to be seen. I want to be shown that they do or don't play. If they don't play, I have a beef with Jerry Abraham, and I'm probably going to ask him to refund every stinking ten dollars that I paid him for each one of these videos, because he ripped me off. Yeah. If I can't see what's in these videos, and I can't play them in my own DVD player, or they won't replay on public access TV, which way they were developed for, I just got ripped off by hundreds of dollars. Hundreds. Yes. Okay, hmm. so now, I think you would like to, uh, first I want to say this. On the 28th of 2016, I came in here for a training, my free 
to our training that's also in this policy and procedure. Mm -hmm. You want to read it, Teresa? Yeah, I sure do. That, um, that asked, um, I, what I asked him if Teresa could come in here and train on the equipment that's owned by the city to video record. Right. And he said, absolutely not. But here's what it says in the policies and procedures. Item 12, training. Upon request to use GRA facilities or equipment, programmer must demonstrate knowledge of operation of the equipment. One two-hour training session consisting of equipment orientation, editing, and field orientation can be scheduled with GRA staff. Additional training time subject to staff availability with reimbursement of staff costs. But the first two hours are supposed to be free. Um, so that I could be trained on, on the equipment here so that any time we wanted to uh, check out a piece of equipment, take it to a, a public event and, and... A video uh, recorder. Yeah, a video recorder. And the city owns them. The right. city, this, we, we paid for it, the city paid for it. It's owned by our city, the equipment, the video cameras are available for anybody, you, me, or anybody else that wants to film a public event and and bring it in here for having broadcast on public access. That's part of his job. Yeah, he's required to do that according to their own policy and procedure. But and yet he work. refused. That no, he wouldn't do that for Teresa. He wouldn't train her how to operate any camera, mine or equipment in here. He said he didn't want. He, I, I said, well, can't you train her on one of your cameras in here? And he said, no, absolutely not. They have buttons and all kinds of stuff, and buttons. It might be trouble for him to actually go through the training process. Okay. So I want you to make your official request here on the air, and then again okay. you can repeat it in his presence when he comes in here during the last five minutes. So if you okay. can get that back to me, I'll sure. make sure to remind you at the end of this. You want me to do it now or yeah. at the end? Okay. I would like to officially request, and this is, this is a, a videotaped request, uh, that Mark Sloop or a deputy of his uh, train me in the two-hour free training session to use the uh, equipment in the GRE studio um, until I'm well enough trained to take it out and use it in a public. Yeah, the video camera. So you know what you're camera. doing and can you can record correctly and, and it's good enough to be aired on this station. That's right. what public access is all about. Absolutely. Okay, um, I want to mention to the viewers that on 12, 14 of 16, which was shortly after Mark Sloop filmed the shops of Little Falls, four programs for them, in violation of their policy, right. uh, that I could record with my video camera in this studio, but I had to turn it off at the end of our filming, and I had to turn it on just be before we recorded. And when I asked why, he said, because they were controlling. He said, we are controlling what goes out of the door. In other words, I had recorded some stuff that was embarrassing for him that I put up on my blog so that the people could hear the things he was saying to Teresa or me or anybody else he was talking with that I thought was kind of bogus. Okay, There's also something the public needs to be aware of, and that is that sometime after that date of 12, 14, 16, we, I was told at one point that we could, I could never, I couldn't film with my camera in here after he had just told me that. The very next time we came in to film, he said, oops, you can't film with your video camera in here anymore. You can either, either I'll record you on my video camera or you can do it on yours and bring me the DVD so that it'll play. Do it on yours off-site. So he else. changed his mind within about a month's time as far as, you know, what he was allowing and not allowing. He, he changes his policies and his decisions almost arbitrarily. weekly or arbitrarily, all of it. So it's very hard to keep up with what, with what his requirements are. And frankly, we feel that they're punitive. We think he's kind of taken something out on us, and I'm not sure what, but, uh, because I don't think that anybody else is being treated in this fashion. Well, there's a reason I wanted to film, continue, be able to continue to film with my camera. First of all, this is public access. Free speech is supposed to be at its zenith in this studio, and at City Hall and on city property everywhere. Okay. Um, I know how to operate my camera and to be able to put it onto the screen of my computer and upload it to YouTube and then put it on my blog. Uh, in the training that I got, the two-hour training on how to make a DVD of it and how to 
cut that and put it up on the blog and all. I have for, forgotten how to do that, and it was more complicated than I could figure out on my computer. And